Shabbat Shalom, everyone. On Sukkot, we invite Ushpizin, guests, into our sukkah, and maybe leave an empty space for them at the table. Today, on Shmini Atzeret, we recite Yisker, where we invite the memory of those we've lost into the room, acknowledging the empty space they've left in us. My family just commemorated the 14th yard site of my grandfather, Arnold Jacobs. I hope it's okay that I briefly share my grandfather's memory with you. Thank you for allowing me to add his to the whole host of memories which weigh especially heavy on our hearts today. The story I want to tell actually centers around my grandmother, Gloria, who feels the absence of her partner most severely and all the time. Every Shabbat, when she was able to attend synagogue, she'd sit in the seat right next to his yardside plaque on the wall because she wanted to sit next to him at shul. One time, services were held in a different room away from the yardside plaques. So as we're leaving, my grandma turns to us and says, I'll just be a minute. I want to say hi to grandpa. We follow her to his plaque as she walks right up to it, kisses her fingertips, and places them gently on the illuminated light bulb, symbolic of his eternal light, his ner tamid. Except I'd noticed that that particular bulb didn't belong to Arnie Jacobs, it belonged to Irving Greenspoon. <laughs> I didn't know whether I should tell her, but knowing what this ritual means to her, I actually decided I should do it. When she realized her mistake, she just looked at me, shrugged her shoulders and said, eh, He's all right, too. <laughs> I miss my Grandpa Arnie very much. I miss the way he'd make a smile for photos. As kids, whenever we'd pose for a picture with him, he'd always wait until the moment right before the photo was snapped to say the dirtiest word he could think of. And it always cracked us up. So every photo with him, we have these huge smiles on our faces. I've saved the photos, but that's not what memory is. Those are just souvenirs. Memory is an eternal light, a ner tamid, whose flame we nurture by kissing it with our fingertips, helping it burn ever brighter together through this tradition of Yisker. The pain we feel is diverse and varied. Some of us hold the memory of a loved one who lived to a ripe old age or cut short tragically, unexpectedly, way too soon. For some of us, time has helped us adjust, and for others, these wounds are still raw. I'm lucky that my grandfather and I both loved each other very much and knew that right up to the end. But for many of us, it's a lot more complicated than that. And we're filled with nuanced, complex feelings. In this room, whether you're joining us in person or through the airwaves, we mourn together, holding all of it with the strength of community, because no one should have to suffer alone. But why recite Yisker right after Sukkot? Maybe it's because the sukkah is a temporary dwelling, and that's supposed to remind us of our own impermanence. Like the law of Jubilee, which we just read about, where we release our land holdings, acknowledging that we might borrow but can never own what belongs to God. Same with Sukkot. The rabbis tell us that on Sukkot, we should make our permanent dwelling temporary and our temporary dwelling permanent. Ose sukkato keva ubeto arai. Let's start with part two of that phrase. Make your permanent dwelling temporary. I think that means that as human beings, we should set aside time to remember that we only dwell temporarily here. Healthy bodies, a comfy home. These might make us feel invulnerable at times or indestructible, but death is an inevitable jubilee of its own, an ultimate release. When we return to our original maker, our original owner, to Makor HaChayim, the source of life. So what we think is forever is actually fleeting. But now let's focus on part one of that phrase. Make your temporary dwelling permanent. Ose sukato keva. If a sukkah is temporary, how can it possibly last forever? It's a riddle. How do we make something fleeting, eternal? Memory. The answer is Yiskor. 
Memory is an everlasting sukkah we build for our loved ones. It's a house we build in our hearts and minds that preserves their ner tamid, their eternal flame. Our ancestors wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The wilderness is an arid wasteland where nothing grows, where there's no life. Our own experiences of death might make us feel like we're wandering in the wilderness. It's why we need the protective embrace of Sukkot, which is a, a harvest festival to transform arid wasteland of our grief into joy and new growth. The sukkah is God's protective embrace in the face of impermanence and death. It's the protective embrace of our B'nai Yashurin community. It's an eternal structure we build for the memory of our loved ones as we recite Yisker together. So that's the Sukkot connection. But today is Shemini Atzeret. Why link Yisker not only to Sukkot, but more specifically to this other holiday of Shemini Atzeret? I want to suggest one possibility which is that Sukkot is historically a pilgrimage festival where we would have made the trip to the ancient temple in Jerusalem. And when Sukkot ends, it's time to go home. But instead, God decrees yet another holiday after Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, Shmini Atzeret, which is really only one thing. God saying, don't go home yet. Don't leave me. Stay a little longer. Doesn't that make Shmini Atzeret the perfect holiday for Yisker? When we invite the souls of our loved ones into this room and say, don't go home yet. Don't leave me. Stay a little longer. One of my favorite poems about loss is by Yehuda Halevi, the 11th century Spanish philosopher and poet. It's called, Tis a Fearful Thing. Tis a fearful thing to love what death can touch. A fearful thing to love, to hope, to dream, to be, to be and oh, to lose. A thing for fools, this, and a holy thing. A holy thing to love. For your life has lived in me, your laugh once lifted me, your word was gift to me. To remember this brings painful joy. Tis a human thing, love a holy thing, to love what death has touched. The sukkah is temporary. Life is temporary. But loving memory, that's forever. Tis a fearful thing, but it's the greatest thing we can do with our fleeting lives, to love. And when release inevitably comes, to build an everlasting sukkah where our loved ones can dwell. Ose Sukato Keva. Yisker is a sukkah that stands forever. We transition now to our Yisker service. It can be found in the booklets.